Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savijay. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 18th of January. India records lowest daily COVID-19 cases since June 2020. Protesters display Indian PM Modi's placards at pro-freedom rally in Pakistan, Sindh. And Afghanistan's international partners call for ceasefire expedited peace effort. And now for all the details. COVID-19 cases in India continue to decline with only 13,788 new cases recorded on Monday. Amid the decline in new virus cases, National Capital New Delhi has also allowed to open schools for class 10th and 12th among easing off other restrictions. This comes as over the past weekend vaccination program against the deadly virus started across the country. India on Monday reported only 13,788 new COVID-19 cases from across the country. The number of the daily new virus cases has dropped for the first time below 15,000 from mid-June last year. In a first, active cases of COVID-19 declined below 2% of the total cases reported in the country on Sunday. Citing decline in daily cases, schools in national capital New Delhi were allowed to open for students of classes 10th and 12th on Monday after a 10-month break due to the pandemic. As part of the standard operating procedures issued by the Delhi government last week, schools are to maintain all COVID-19 protocols, implement staggered timings, have less than 15 students per classroom or laboratory and ensure students remain in one batch throughout the course of the classes. I would like to say that it's a very difficult time for the whole world and for the children. But I am happy that स्थितियां अब नियंत्रण में आई हैं और अभी भी पूरी तरह से नियंत्रण में नहीं है इसलिए इसलिए पूरे स्कूल तो नहीं खुले हैं लेकिन दसवीं और बारहवीं की बोर्ड की परीक्षाओं के लिए बच्चों की थोड़ी तैयारी हो सके उनके प्रैक्टिकल हो सके उनके प्रोजेक्ट सबमिट हो सके उनकी काउंसलिंग हो सके हम बहुत खुश हैं और अपने दोस्तों से मिलेंगे जिनकी अभी मतलब याद आ रही थी और जब हम लॉकडाउन में मतलब पढ़ते थे घर पे कई के पास नेटवर्क इशू होता था तो मतलब जो है हम उतना अच्छे से मतलब समझ नहीं पाते थे समझ तो लेते थे पर जो एक सामने सामने का वो होता है मतलब बीच का कनेक्शन वो नहीं बन पाता था क्योंकि कभी टीचर का नेट नहीं चलता था कभी हमारा तो उसमें दिक्कत होती थी बच्चों को और अब हम स्कूल आ गए हैं जो हमें वैसे डाउट्स हैं वो क्लियर करेंगे पैटर्न समझेंगे नया क्या है मीन वाइल ओवर टू हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी फोर थाउजेंड प्रायोरिटी ग्रुप इंडिविजुअल्स हैव बीन वैक्सीनेटेड एट द एंड ऑफ टू डेज ऑफ इंडिया इनोक्यूलेशन ड्राइव आउट ऑफ द बेनिफिशियरीज ओनली फोर हंड्रेड फोर्टी सेवन एडवर्स इवेंट्स केसेस हैव बीन रिपोर्टेड थ्री ऑफ देम रिक्वायर्ड हॉस्पिटलाइजेशन विद टू बींग डिस्चार्ज ऑलरेडी द यूनियन मिनिस्ट्री सेट ऑन संडे After halting the vaccine drive due to widespread complaints about the technical glitches in Covin app, the government of Western Maharashtra, once the worst affected state due to the COVID-19, will restart the drive from Tuesday. The protests against the three new farm laws in India entered the 55th day on Monday. The protesting farmers observed Women Pharmacists Day in parts of the country to celebrate the incomparable role of women in agriculture. The ongoing protests by farmers in India against the three farm laws that liberalize agriculture sector entered the 55th day on Monday. As part of their intensified protests, the agitating farmers on Monday observed Women Farmers Day across the country to celebrate the incomparable role of women in agriculture. A deadlock continues to persist as the government has ruled out the laws will be revoked, a key demand of farmers, while the Supreme Court has ordered an indefinite stay on implementing them and appointed a panel to hear objections of farmers. Another round of talks between the government and protesting farmers is scheduled to be held on Tuesday to resolve the impasse. हमारी मांग जो तीन कानून सरकार ने बनाए हैं वो रद्द हो जाएं और उसके ऊपर एमएसपी पे गारंटी दे सरकार और दो जो अभी ऑर्डिनेंस ही हैं वो भी जो है वो रद्द होने चाहिए क्योंकि ये खाली सिर्फ किसानों का मसला नहीं है हमारे देश की जन जन का आवाम का मसला है मीन वाइल स्कोर्स ऑफ फार्मर्स ऑन मंडे ऑल्सो हेल्ड अ ट्रैक्टर मार्च एट द चंडीगढ़ पंजाब बॉर्डर अगेंस्ट द लेजिस्लेशन 
farmers have warned if the three laws are not revoked by January 26, when India celebrates Republic Day, they will march on with tractors to capital New Delhi. In news from Pakistan. The Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Party on Sunday said that Opposition Alliance will hold a massive protest outside the Election Commission on January 19th to demand immediate decision in the foreign funding case against ruling Pakistan Tehreek and Saf Party. The case pertaining to irregularities in party funding has been pending for the last six years. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz spokesperson Mariam Aurangzeb on Sunday said that political parties which are part of the Pakistan Democratic Movement are coming to get a decision on foreign funding case from the Election Commission on January 19 and will sit with party Vice President Mariam Nawaz until the decision is given in writing. The foreign funding case filed in 2014 pertains to alleged financial irregularities in accounts of PM Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf or PTI party. Hitting out at Imran Khan led PTI government, Mariam Aurangzeb said that selected, corrupt, and incompetent government was under immense pressure from the opposition alliance PDM's campaign for its resignation by January 31. <laughs> अभी तो इलेक्शन कमिशन जा रही है इलेक्शन कमिशन से तहरीरी फैसला लेने इंशाल्लाह वो दिन आएगा जब लॉन्ग मार्च करके आवाम जाएगी और सिलेक्टेड टोले से क्या लेकर आएगी असली चीजें कराएगी। The PTI has refuted allegations of illegal funding from two U.S. companies and said if any funds were collected, the responsibility lies with the agents. The opposition leaders have announced they will lead a protest on Tuesday outside the Election Commission's office to demand immediate decision in the case, which is pending for the last six years. Moving on, in a massive pro-freedom rally in Pakistan, Sindh, protesters on Sunday carried placards of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other world leaders to seek their intervention for the freedom of Sindh Udesh from the occupation of Pakistan. Sindhi activists have long been requesting the international community to take notice of the crackdown by Pakistani state against their peaceful struggle. In a massive pro-freedom rally organized on the 117th birth anniversary of GM Sayyid, one of the founding fathers of modern Sindhi nationalism, protesters carried placards of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and other world leaders to seek their intervention for the freedom of Sindhu Desh. The protesters raised pro-freedom slogans during the rally held in Sayyid's hometown of Sun in Pakistan's Sindh province on Sunday. Sindhu Desh is a demand for a separate homeland for Sindhis, which emerged in 1967 under the leadership of GM Sayyid and Peer Ali Muhammad Rashdi. There are several nationalist parties in Sindh who advocate for a free Sindh nation, calling Pakistan an occupier that continues to exploit their resources. Sindhi activists have long been requesting the international community to take notice of violence against their peaceful struggle. They blame innocent Sindhi people are subjected to atrocities by Pakistani security forces for raising their voices. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's international partners have announced their support for the peace efforts and ceasefire in the country. During a virtual meeting with Afghan officials on Sunday, the international partners exchanged views on the peace process, the second round of the talks in Doha and the regional and international support for peace. Afghanistan's international partners in a virtual meeting with Afghan officials on Sunday announced their support for the peace efforts, ceasefire and humanitarian values in the country informed the High Council for National Reconciliation. Abdullah Abdullah, head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, Chief Afghan Peace Negotiator Masoom Stanaksai, among others, attended the meeting. The event was the second monthly meeting of the High Council for National Reconciliation Regional and International Affairs Commission with members of Kabul's diplomatic corps. This comes as second round of peace talks between the Afghan government's team and the Taliban are underway in Doha. The two sides have held four meetings including Sunday evening's meeting 
at the working group level, but they have not had progress in finalizing the agenda that will open the way for formal talks. More on news from Afghanistan. Violence in Afghanistan has increased in recent days, including targeted attacks in cities like capital Kabul. In the latest, two female judges were killed by unknown gunmen in the Afghan capital on Sunday. It comes as international donors and governments have expressed concern over the progress of women's rights in Afghanistan. Unknown gunmen shot and killed two female judges and wounded their driver in Afghan capital Kabul on Sunday. Police said, although no one has claimed responsibility for the attack. Local media said the women who worked for the Supreme Court were on their way to their office when they were attacked. Targeted killings of journalists, government officials and rights activists have increased rapidly in recent months as violence surges in Afghanistan despite peace talks between the government and the Taliban. <laughs> International donors and governments have also expressed apprehension about a possible reversal of progress on women's rights over the last two decades if the Taliban return to any sort of power with the withdrawal of foreign troops from the country in near future. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka Air Force has expanded its capability to detect narcotics and explosives at airports with the addition of 20 canines brought from the Netherlands. The group of canines specialized in the task recently graduated during a passing out ceremony. A group of 20 dogs belonging to the Sri Lanka Air Force dog unit took part in a passing out ceremony held recently at the SLAF base in Katunaike. According to the Sri Lanka Air Force, this group includes dogs imported from the Netherlands comprising five Belgian Melinois, five Labrador Retrievers, five German Shepherds and five English Springer Spaniels. The canines are specially trained as sniffer dogs in detecting drug trafficking and would be deployed at the Bandra Naike International Airport near Colombo and Matala Rajapaksa International Airport in Matala. The air dog unit set up in 1972 runs the sniffer dogs at all international airports in Sri Lanka and are also trained to assist search and rescue teams in times of disaster including landslides. Veterinarians and volunteers in Western India have taken an initiative to rescue and treat birds injured during the recent Kite Flying Festival, celebrated a day before the Hindu festival of Makar Sakranti in the country. Kites taught the skylines in various parts of India during the festival and birds come in contact with the glass-coated strings used to fly kites. Veterinarians and volunteers in India's western Gujarat state are doing a great job by rescuing and treating birds injured during the recent kite flying festival in the country. Many birds are injured or killed during the Hindu festival of Makar Sakranti when kites dot the skies in various parts of India and come in contact with manja, the glass-coated string used to fly kites. The string is sharp enough to slash the thread of an opponent's kite in the sky during the kite fights. जैसे ही कहीं से भी कॉल आता है कि यहाँ पर घायल पक्षी है, तो वो जो एरिया उसके पास में होता है, वो कैंप के वॉलेंटियर्स जाते हैं, उसको पक्षी को रेस्क्यू करके यहाँ पे हमारे रेस्क्यू सेंटर या तो फिर पॉली क्लिनिक पशु चिकित्सालय या तो फिर पुत्री जापा चिकित्सालय में उसको दिया जाता है और वहाँ पे हमारे पास वेटरनरी डॉक्टर्स रहते हैं ये तीनों जगह पे और उनको तुरंत ट्रीटमेंट दिया जाता है। Till now, around 245 injured birds, including pigeons, goose, eagles, among others, have been rescued and given treatment this year at the facilities set up by the forest department. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.